Hey, what's up, guys? Parker Walbeck here with FullTimeFilmmaker.com, and today we're going to be diving into my top 10 tips for shooting professional real estate videos. And if you guys end up liking this, I've actually put together a four hour mini course focusing just on landing, filming, and editing real estate videos. So stay tuned till the end to learn more about that. But in this video, the tips I'll be covering are all questions that I've been asked on my Instagram account at FullTimeFilmmaker, where I asked you guys what questions you have about shooting real estate videos. So if you want to help me know what material to cover in these tutorials, and go give me a follow at Full Time Filmmaker. Well, let's go ahead and dive right in. Tip number one, probably my most commonly asked question when it comes to real estate videos is, how do you land real estate gigs? Who do you approach and what do you say? Now, this is a deep question and I cover it more in depth inside Full Time Filmmaker in the business section, but the most important factor that I've found to landing real estate clients is to have a strong demo video or portfolio. You can be the smoothest talker in the world, but if your work isn't any good, then people won't won't hire you. Your work should do most of the talking for you. And if you don't have a good demo video, then I'd go out offering my services for free to real estate agents until someone agrees to let you shoot a free video that you can then use as a demo video for future clients. Be aware though that real estate agents won't be willing to pay decent money for real estate videos unless they have a lot of commission on the line. And that's why I recommend only targeting luxury listings because agents of luxury listings will usually have marketing budgets for videos. And by luxury, I mean multi-million dollar listings. The smallest listings I've done are about a million dollars and I've done up to $11 million. So I personally would try and target homes in that range if I were you. Now, as far as the logistics of getting in contact with a real estate agent, go drive through a luxury neighborhood looking for for sale signs and call the numbers of the agents on the signs or go online and look for luxury listings near you and contact the agent. But what should you say once you contact them? Well, I would tell them, I want to shoot a real estate video for you, send them your demo reel of your work and then I'd recommend telling them what you normally charge but then offering to do the first video for free or cheap to show them the value you can bring to their business. And what makes a good demo video you may ask? We'll spend the majority of this video talking about just that. But I asked my real estate agent specifically what do you look for when a videographer reaches out to you about shooting a video for you besides obviously the quality of their work. And he said two big things that are important to him are being available and having a quick turnaround time. Now let's assume Assume you've done a video for free, the agent loved it, and now they want to start hiring you to do more. The next big question I get is, well, how much do I charge? Now this depends on how long it will take you to shoot the house and what your time is worth based on your skill level. But just to give you an idea, most real estate videos I do take me about four to five hours to shoot, so I charge my half day rate, which is about $1,000. Then it takes me another four to five hours to edit the video, for which I charge $500. Then add on the music license, a voiceover, and I'm usually around $1,800 to $2,000 for a basic real estate video. And I've actually built and created a budget calculator that comes with Full-Time Filmmaker that helps you determine your skill level so you can know how much your time is worth, then times that by how long the video will take to determine the price you should charge. So hopefully that gives you a good idea about pricing. Next question I get asked a lot is what pre-planning needs to be done? As soon as the agent reaches out about wanting me to shoot a house, we coordinate a date that works for both of us and the seller. Then I have him send me a picture picture of what the home looks like and which way it's facing to determine what time of day the light would look best and also how big the home is to know how long it would take me to shoot. Then we'll schedule a time accordingly. That's about all the info I need going into the shoot. Then once I show up, I have the agent walk me through the house letting me know things to feature in the video and what things to avoid featuring and any other nearby amenities that he wants me to showcase as well. Then he or his assistant will go through the house making sure all the lights are turned on, that the rooms look clean and presentable. And and sometimes I'll even move things that look out of place or don't look good on camera, but 90% of the time the agent and or the seller has staged the home the way they like it. The next question I get asked most is what is the minimum camera gear that I would need to shoot professionally? The cheapest possible setup that I can think of that I'd say you could get away with and still create professional looking images is something like a Canon SL2, a Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter, and a Flycam Red King and a DJI Mavic totaling around $2,000 as a startup cost, which I know seems expensive, but you should be able to make that money back with just one or two real estate gigs. Here's a video shot by one of our full-time filmmaker members, Josiah Begley, using the Canon SL2 and a Zoom Crane V2 stabilizer and the Mavic Air. This was his first real estate video ever, so that just goes to show how quickly you can create quality images without breaking the bank. Now, the reason I recommend Canon cameras is because they have great natural
natural looking in-camera colors so you won't have to spend so much time in post color correcting. And I recommend wide angle lenses so you can make the homes look bigger than they really are. I would say between 14 and 18 millimeter on a full frame lens is a good range to be in. Much wider and it looks too distorted and much tighter and you can't see enough of the room. And I recommend using a 2.8 aperture lens because you'll often have low light rooms when shooting real estate like in basements. And so to avoid having too much noise in your image, you'll want a lens that can stop down to 2.8. And yes, a drone for real estate is necessary. Maybe not for the smaller homes that don't have a very big budget, but for the well-paying luxury real estate gigs, agents are going to expect aerial footage. And in order to fly drones commercially, legally, make sure to get your part 107 and a link to some great resources to help you do so quickly and easily. Now, as far as the camera gear that I use, I shoot my real estate videos with the 1DX Mark II, a Liowa 12 millimeter lens, which when shooting at 4K on the 1DX, it crops it to 1.35 times, making it around a 16 millimeter. And for stabilizers, I use the Ronin S and Glide Cam. Personally, for real estate, I like motorized gimbals better, and I use the Phantom 4 Pro Plus for my drone. But like I've mentioned, if you're just starting out, you can definitely get by with a cheaper setup if you know how to use your gear to its fullest potential. Which leads me to our next tip, and that is camera settings. Now, even though I deliver my final real estate videos in 1080p, and most real estate agents aren't going to need anything better than 1080p, I like to shoot my videos at 4K, but you can definitely get by with just shooting at 1080p. For the frame rate, I like to shoot at 60 frames per second because it helps further smooth out my camera movements. I keep my shutter speed at double my frame rate at 1 25th. My ISO I keep as low as possible and I just adjust my aperture according to how much light is available. But typically I find myself shooting around 2.8 to about 5.6. For my picture profile, I like to use a profile that gives me great and natural looking colors straight out of camera. And with any Canon camera, you can get the same look that I do by creating a custom profile to standard with sharpness set to zero, contrast negative two, saturation zero, and color tone zero. For white balance, this just depends on each room, but the rooms that don't have very much natural light, it's usually going to be around 3000 Kelvin. And for rooms that are lit completely by natural light or in outdoors, I set my Kelvin to daylight, which is around 5600 Kelvin. And for rooms that have both daylight and artificial light, it'll be somewhere in the middle of those two. Just make sure to manually set your color temperature for each new room and check on your camera to make sure your whites look white instead of too cool or too warm. And I cover this room by room in the virtual job shadow videos. Our next tip is composition. My biggest piece of advice in composing your shots is to use wide angle lenses that show the whole room. Another important tip to good composition is to make sure your lines are straight. This will help you avoid making the rooms look distorted with your wide angle lens. You don't want to be pointing too far down or too far up, but rather keep your camera level so that all of your lines are straight. The only times I do tilt downs or tilt ups is if I'm trying to show the expansiveness of a ceiling height in a tall room or views from upper rooms. Another composition tip is to film between eye and waist level. If you film from too high, you're going to make the ceiling look low. And if you film from too low, you won't be able to see over the furniture. Another tip is to use foreground. I like to walk through doorways because it gives you foreground to sell your movement and make the rooms look bigger because you're shooting from outside of the room. Which brings me to another important composition tip, and that is to hug the walls while you're shooting to make the rooms look as big as possible. As it relates to aerial shots, try not to include neighbors' houses when possible, as it will make the property feel smaller. You really don't wanna to be too far away from the house unless you're showing off a great view or something near the house that the realtor wants to show off, like a lake or a mountain or something. But in general, you wanna fill your whole frame with the house. And as another piece of composition, tip number Number seven is focus. The big question I get is how do I set my focus for real estate videos? If I'm using my 1DX Mark II with a lens that has autofocus, then I'll usually just use autofocus. Or in my case, because I use a manual lens, the Liowa 12 millimeter, I set the focus manually for each shot. I do this by finding the point in the room where the middle of my shot will be. I will then set the focus on the back wall or the center of my frame or whatever I want the viewer to be focused on. Then I'll back up, push record, and then glide through the room walking past that point of focus. So technically the shot isn't perfectly in focus the whole time, but it is for the main part of the shot. And when you're using wide angle lenses, guys, most
almost everything is in focus anyway. So you really have a lot of leeway to move forward and back and still have most everything in focus. So in short, use a wide angle lens and just make sure the room as a whole is in focus and you should be good. Tip number eight is camera movement. I often get asked, what are the best ground and drone movements to use in real estate? For the drone shots, I like to use the push-in shot looking straight on the front of the house for my intro clip, a pull out from the front or back of the house as the outro clip, and then I like to get a few parallax shots around the outside of the house. Then I'll usually grab a couple rise ups while tilting down and at least one bird's eye view of the property looking straight down to show the property lines. For ground movements, I like to do mostly straight push in shots because to me that feels the most natural from a storytelling point of view as if I'm the buyer touring through the house walking forward into each room because you don't walk backwards. So I recommend keeping all the shots moving forward. And like I mentioned, sometimes I'll add a little tilt here and there or if the room opens up left or right, I'll add in a little pan while moving forward. And obviously make sure to keep your movements clean, smooth, and slow. And again, I think motorized gimbals are the best tool if used correctly for real estate movement. Tip number nine is lighting. I get asked a lot, how do I nail exposure indoors without overexposing the windows outdoors? And along with that, what is the best time of day to shoot? And do I use any artificial lights to fill in light? As far as nailing exposure goes, I I use my histogram and try to read it so that there aren't any blown out highlights. This means that sometimes I'll have some parts of my interior that are too dark, but then I just bring up those shadows in post a little. But if you have rooms with big enough windows, it usually lights up the room enough to where indoor and outdoor exposures are pretty much the same. But for smaller rooms that are mostly lit by indoor lights, I tend to let those windows blow out a little bit because I'd rather expose for the room correctly than leave the room too dark. So I'm okay blowing out some windows sometimes, but a great tip to making sure you don't blow out the windows is to film during certain times of day. The best times of day I found to shoot interiors is when there's cloud coverage so there isn't any harsh direct sunlight coming in the house or at dusk right after the sun sets because there's still ambient light outside but it's not so bright that your windows are all blown out. However there are some rooms and some houses that have big open windows that you want to show off the sun flaring through so sunsets and sunrises are good times to shoot those kinds of rooms. Basically you can really shoot any time of the day or any type of weather it really just depends on each room or each location of that room in that house house and sometimes I'll shoot the same room at different times of day and just take whichever lighting scenario looked better. And as far as using artificial lights, I've tried it before but it's pretty time consuming to drag lights into each individual room. It will double or triple the amount of time it takes you to shoot the house if you light it correctly. And most sellers and agents don't want you there two to three times longer. So personally, I just use natural light. For shooting outdoors, sunrise, sunset, and dusk are typically the best times to shoot lighting wise. However, if the house is up against a mountain so there's no golden hour, or if there's a lot of trees that shade the house and yard, then it might look better to shoot midday so there's less shadows. Just kind of depends on the house position and the surrounding landscapes. To put it simply, just do what looks best. And again, I'll usually shoot the exterior and interior at different times of day and then just take whichever lighting scenario looks best. And speaking of shooting at different times of day, our last and final tip number 10 is what order do you shoot in and how long does it take to shoot? Typically, I like to show up around the house around 4 or 5 p.m., shoot exterior for an hour or two, then go inside and shoot interior for an hour or two. And by that time, it's about golden hour, so I'll come back out outside, shoot the exterior again for about a half hour during golden hour light, then run inside and grab any rooms that may have looked better with golden hour light. Then as the sun sets, I grab a few more interior shots in rooms that may look better during dusk. And then towards the end of dusk, as it starts getting pretty dark, I'll run outside and grab a few drone shots showing the house lit up if it has a lot of lights to show off. So it's really just a lot of back and forth getting different rooms or different angles of exterior in different types of lighting just to give myself some options and and then using whichever shots look best. And then I'll usually wrap up the shoot around 9, 9.30, making my whole shoot about four to five hours long. So that's it for my 10 tips. As a bonus tip, we'll cover more in depth in the next video. I had a lot of you asking questions about my editing process, like what the total length of the video should be. Should I use a voiceover or on-screen text? What order should I put the clips in? Where do you find real estate music and sound effects? How do you do transitions? What are your export settings and so on? So if you wanna learn my top 10 tips to 
editing real estate videos, then you're gonna have to join the all new Real Estate Video Pro mini course. Also included in this mini course is an hour long video showcasing my full editing process. I'll also provide you with the raw footage and a Premiere Pro project file for one of my real estate video projects so you can get an inside look to see everything I do in the editing room. I also have three different virtual job shadow videos walking you through my whole process of shooting three different properties with three different stabilizers. I also share with you the top 10 mistakes that I see my students making in their real estate videos and I'll provide several feedback videos showing me breakdown student real estate videos so that you can know what to improve and I also give you 10 of my favorite real estate songs that I like to use and where you can license them to save you time on searching for music and I also share with you my Ronin S gimbal settings and my favorite drone settings for smooth cinematic shots and lastly I throw in our smooth zoom transition Premiere Pro preset pack so if you'd like to up your real estate game you can sign up today for this four hour mini course by clicking over here and this mini course is also included inside the full course at fulltimefilmmaker.com link in the description to learn more about our ultimate online film school but well, that's it guys hope these tips were helpful for you don't forget to subscribe for more goodies and if you have any further questions for me please let me know